This video is rapid revision of enzymes. It's the most basic facts, so it's not everything, but it's where you start if you want to write your own notes. I hope it helps. The best thing to do is to start off by writing some key facts, the easy ones like define what an enzyme is. So enzymes are biological catalysts. So they are these molecules that alter the speed or the rate of biochemical reactions. So they make metabolic reactions happen fast enough to sustain life. So they make the reactions in cells happen fast enough to keep life going. Enzymes are always proteins. So if you're asked a question, what's the chemical nature of enzymes, you always say that they're proteins. And so they always contain these elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Very important. Enzymes, because they're proteins, are folded into a globular shape. So remember, there are two shapes for proteins, fibrous and globular, but enzymes are globular shaped, so they're folded into globular shapes. So the key to understanding how enzymes work is to recognise that it's all about their shape, their globular shape. More importantly, on the surface of every enzyme is this depression, this uniquely shaped depression known as the active site. And if you do anything to the shape of the active site, well then the enzyme will not be able to do its function. It will not be able to catalyse. Enzymes are highly specific. This means that they'll only catalyse one reaction or one type of reaction. And so we use active site theory to help us explain this. How does this happen? How is it that enzymes can only catalyse one type of reaction or one specific reaction? In an enzyme controlled reaction, we have our enzyme with its uniquely shaped active site. And then there is the substrate molecule, which is complementary. There's one type of substrate molecule that can bind with the active site of that particular enzyme. They're very specific. The substrate binds with the active site of the enzyme and the active site actually changes shape slightly to better fit the substrate. At this stage, an enzyme substrate complex is made and this is where perfect conditions force the reaction to go ahead. At the end, you have your enzyme unchanged and your newly formed products. Enzymes are then free to catalyse more reactions. So just to recap, the substrate molecules, these are what are getting changed or converted into the products. They're either getting built up or broken down. And it's the substrate molecules that bind with the active site of the enzyme. The active site has a unique shape and that shape is held together by chemical bonds. And the active site will then actually change shape slightly to better fit around the substrate once they've come into contact, once they've binded together. The reaction will proceed and then at the end of it you have your enzyme unchanged. So once the active site and the substrate bind together, the active site then slightly changes shape to better fit around the substrate. And this is creating those best conditions for the reaction to proceed. And this is known as the induced fit model. And it's describing how the active site works. The induced fit model replaced the lock and key theory. So active site shape is the key to how an enzyme works. And if you do anything to alter or change the shape of the active site, well, then the enzyme cannot do its function. It cannot catalyze. So what are the factors that can have an impact or change the shape of the active site? Well, the two most important are temperature and pH. The active site shape will be altered by temperature and pH or can be altered by temperature and pH because each enzyme has a specific temperature range at which it works best, catalyzes at its most efficient rate. And so this is known as the optimum temperature. And if you raise the temperature beyond the optimum for that particular enzyme, well, it's going to change the shape of the enzyme, which changes the shape of the active site. And this will impact on the active site. It won't be able to connect or bind with the substrate molecule. And so it will not be able to function. It is said to be denatured. The same is true for enzyme pH. Enzymes have an optimum pH, a pH at which they will catalyze at their most efficient rate. Above and below this, if you change the pH above or below this, well, then it's going to alter the shape of the active site. The enzyme will no longer be able to catalyze. It's said to be denatured. So these are two of the important graphs which you encounter on the enzyme chapter. So the first is showing how if you increase the temperature, you increase the rate of the reaction until you reach the optimum temperature for that enzyme, after which the rate of the reaction will drop off. The same with the pH. There's an optimum pH, but you can also see that the pH peak is narrower. So there's a less of a tolerance for changing the pH for enzymes. So as well as temperature and pH, there are other factors which will affect enzyme activity. Enzyme concentration, substrate concentration and the presence of inhibitors also. 
We've studied about catabolic reactions, those metabolic reactions in which large complex molecules are broken down into smaller or simpler molecules with the release of energy. Well, there are catabolic enzymes, specific enzymes that are involved in these types of reactions. And so they're involved in getting large complex molecules and splitting them into smaller molecules. And examples would be those enzymes involved in digestion. An example would be amylase, which breaks down starch, this large complex polysaccharide into maltose, which is a simpler molecule molecule a disaccharide. So as well as those catabolic reactions, we also have anabolic reactions, those building reactions where you have simple molecules coming together, being made into larger, more complex molecules, and this requires the input of energy. So there are particular enzymes, anabolic enzymes, that are involved in these building reactions. And a classic example of an anabolic process is photosynthesis. And an example of an anabolic enzyme would be DNA polymerase, which is involved in creating or making DNA. So at the end of the enzyme chapter, you look at bioprocessing, which is the use of enzyme controlled reactions to produce a product. And bioprocessing takes place in these vessels known as bioreactors. And it's important that you can define what a bioreactor is. It's a vessel or container in which cells or their components are used to make useful products. Immobilized enzymes are often used in bioprocessing. And a definition of immobilization is important to know. It's attaching or fixing enzymes to each other or to an inert material. And here's a picture of what we did in the lab. We trapped or immobilized our enzymes in a gel, sodium alginate. But there are other methods, absorption onto glass beads, binding to solid supports or bonding to each other are other methods. So why immobilize? What are the benefits of immobilization? Number one is a pure product. Number two is that it stabilizes the enzymes. And number three is that the enzymes can be reused. So that was the very basics of enzymes in one video. Always use your textbook. That's so important. And it's really important that you do exam papers and check the official marking schemes. And don't forget the enzyme practicals. There is bound to be one on your exam. Best of luck.